see you Welcome to the Let's Think Show. This is Shepard, the voluntarist, and I have a special guest today, kind of a a guy that kind of first got me interested in uh, audio recording and such. We'll get into that later. And by the way, do you prefer Steve or Steven? No, it doesn't matter. Steve's fine. Okay, perfect. That's that's, I can remember that one. Uh, Well, welcome to the show, Steve. Appreciate you being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, I guess I'm just an average normal person, no different than anybody else. Uh, Anarchist. Uh, I was an anarchist for about, what was it? I guess 10 years or so now. Uh, Great, great. Um, I did the audio book, of course, of Clark and Rose's Most Dangerous Superstition. I did. Yeah, I remember when I... Did we? I don't know if we met each other in Arizona beforehand or not, but I think we first met in Acapulco in 2016. So it's yep. been what, just a, five years and a month now or so. And I remember you chatting with Larkin and telling him all about your project. And God, he just loved it. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for those of you that uh, might not have heard The Most Dangerous Superstition, as uh, narrated by Steve, uh, he read Most Dangerous Superstition and said, oh, my gosh, everybody has to to get this book or have access to it. And so he remodeled a room in his house. He actually showed it to me some years ago. Uh, He put the sound panels up and bought all the expensive audio gear and the mics and the mixing equipment, taught himself the techie piece of doing it and narrated the whole book, uh, Most Dangerous Superstition by Larkin Rose. Uh, It's available for free. He gave, uh, gave it to me to put on, on, uh, SoundCloud. So if you look up SoundCloud, uh, openly voluntary, most dangerous superstition, it's all there for free uh, to download and listen to. Well worth doing. Thanks. Thanks, by the way, on behalf of my grandchildren and the world, you're making better for them for doing that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that to anybody else. To do that. <laughs> you know what? I, I've just found from the last couple of years of doing audio and video content, my gosh, there's so much I don't know. The more I learn, the more I realize, oh, there's a whole nother rabbit hole. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You could, you could spend the rest of your life learning this stuff. It's Yeah. So uh, what are you up to these days? What are you, uh, what are you doing for, for vocation, for uh, Liberty stuff? What are your interests, fun stuff? What are you, what are you up to these days? As far as Liberty and all that, I've kind of like put that on the back burner as much as I, as I, as much as I can. Um, it's just too stressful. It's, yeah. <laughs> You know, and, and for the amount of work that you put into it and the amount of reward you get out of it, I don't think for me anyways, personally, it just wasn't worth it. I was just like, eh, you know, if somebody asked me, if somebody has a question, I'll, you know, I'll talk to them about it, of course. Um, just like with veganism, like we we're about to talk about. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna go out and hold signs and oh, rah, 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 you guys are all wrong and I'm right. You know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't care if I'm right or wrong. It's just like, it is what it is. You know, we all take... Uh, stock and our own decisions so to me that's very important i try the best i can to uh be logically consistent in everything that i do uh so and that's just what i preach if anybody has any questions or anything like that with me i I just talk about logic and how important logic is how important it is to be logically consistent and remove any contradictions you might have and that is extremely difficult for people to do i mean people underestimate just how difficult that is isn't that just the truth that's that's i I think that's what was a big shift for me was just saying okay can i hold these two very different beliefs at the same time and then realize it's certainly more comfortable to do that if you just don't even think about it life is certainly easier but if you do want to be intellectually consistent logical reasonable rational uh Sometimes you have to give up when you hit that cognitive dissonance thing. You got to give something up. Um, and I, you know, I hear you too about, I go back and forth between wanting to be a, a liberty activist and just saying, is it really worth it? Uh, I, you know, I'm putting a thousand hours a year into it and a couple thousand bucks a year. And what have I really done? Have I, have I really helped someone see the world from a different perspective? Maybe not. I might've had one impact in the last five years. No way of knowing. Um, right. So yeah, yeah, I go back and forth. Yeah. And, and like, I, cause I had the podcast for a little bit. I think I only did like three episodes and then I just threw in the towel. And, but the, the problem is, I think that you probably realize this too, is you don't realize how many people are actually listening to you or watching you, you know, your, your media equipment or whatever your, your ratings are, 
it'll say, okay, like two or three people have viewed this, but that's not actually true. You know, it, it it's more like you know, it could be 50 or 60 or 70 people. Right. But they're all on different platforms or they got it from a different, different, uh, whatever, a different source. Right. Somehow or other, because I've had people, you know, come up to me and, oh yeah, I really liked your podcast. I'm like, I didn't even know anybody heard my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's rewarding. Is it? Hey, I had a viewer. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I had a listener. Somebody actually yeah. listened. Yeah. That's incredible. I'm constantly astounded too. It's like, whoa, wait, somebody actually uh, is has the same weird nerdy curiosities I do. <laughs> right. So I prefer just to talk to people face to face now, instead of trying to make videos and do all that and try, I mean, it would be fun. I wouldn't mind maybe trying to get back into it sometime in the future but um for now you know i just uh you know i like to ride dirt bikes and just enjoy my life and have fun i do photography too so i i just like doing stuff like that yeah speaking of which i don't know uh, for those of you that see my let's think show uh logo that photograph is actually one that uh steve took of me so thank you for that i appreciate it you're welcome um so let's get kind of into the philosophy part of it um it so first of all, rights. Uh, I have been a little bit frustrated over the years at some of the attitudes and the perspectives and the inconsistencies of some of the vegans that I have, have spoken with. And that's actually why you're on today is because you were the most reasonable, common sense, real world about it. But I, I'm wondering, what do you think about, is it is it a rights thing? Do you think that animals have a right not to get killed and eaten by humans or do rights even exist? Um. I think the right is from the person who's causing the action. So for instance, um, like a victim doesn't necessarily have rights, but you as uh, the superior person or the one with the moral compass, it's up to you. You have the responsibility. So it's not up to like, for instance, if you've seen somebody who was uh, say mentally, you know, not up to, Whatever. If, if there was a human that 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 couldn't uh, think or use their moral compass in the, in the same way as say as somebody that that's an, at a normal level, right? You wouldn't say, well, they don't have rights because, well, well they just can't think as clearly as I can, you know. So it's uh, whether it's if you want to call it rights or not. Um, I prefer the way like Mark Passio explains it, where a right is if you don't cause any harm, you know, and the wrong is if you've caused harm. So, oh, okay. So that's how I see rights and wrongs as they actually are kind of like as a right, a right is a good thing or something that that's neutral, neutral to good. And a wrong is something that is destructive, you know, or harmful. Okay. So that's to really simplify it. Okay. And, and I guess as we get into this more, we'll probably get into the whole idea of good and bad and what is subjective and which what is objective. You know, if you break right. a rock in half or you break a celery stalk in half or you break a cow in half yeah. or a human in half, who gets to decide what's good and bad as you break these things in half? Um, yeah, and I think we can get into that as we get a little bit more into the, the meat, <laughs> meat of it. See there? Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, I have just absolutely loved the vegan movement's propaganda over the last few years. It's brilliant because the, the food industry has turned a piece of a cow into beef. A word that well, yep. I would never eat a baby cow, but I would eat a piece of beef. And they have done a brilliant job saying, "No, are you going to go eat some dead chickens?" Um, well, wait a minute. No, I like chickens. I wouldn't do that. Side note, but right. brilliant, brilliant move. So when we met five years ago or so, a little bit over that, um, we were both six foot two. I'd be, I'm guessing we're both still right around that six two, six three range, and we were both uh, about sixty pounds overweight. I'm guessing. Uh, and I am, I dropped some and then now I'm back up. So now I'm only down 10 from that. Um, <laughs> how, it looks to me Struggle. from your facial structure, you're doing better than that. Tell me. Uh, yeah, I'm probably 210. I'm okay. 6'4", 210. Um, back when I was in, when we first met, I was probably pushing 300. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah, I was, I was a big boy. And what do you what do you think caused the uh, the change? Why are you why do you weigh less now? It, I wouldn't say it's from my vegan diet, um, because uh, I don't lose weight when I'm 
when I'm eating. So I do water fasting. So, okay. So water fasting is the reason why I've lost weight. And that's what, if, if I see myself getting out of control and starting to gain a bunch of weight, I'll go on a six day water fast and boom, I'm right back to normal again. And I feel great. Your discipline is incredible. Wow. So six days water fasting. So water fasting, is that you only drink water and you don't eat any foods? Is that what that means? Right. Right. Yeah. So that's uh water fasting is where like maybe other people have different definitions of water fasting and how to do it. Um, I drink distilled water. That's usually my go-to anyways is distilled water. Um, so I'll put maybe a little lemon in it. Uh, that's about it. Anything without calories is okay, but I don't, I just try to make it simple. So I'll put a little touch of lemon. And then uh, when I'm getting into the, you know, fourth or fifth day, then maybe I'll add a little bit of salt just to help retain water. Um, okay. And, yeah. And I, I just, I'm astounded because after you talked to me about this uh, fasting thing years ago, I tried it and I'm so proud of myself. One day I made it almost two days, but and I've made it one day a couple times. I just can't even imagine six days. Way to go. So well, the one or two days, those are the hardest. Okay. If you go another day, you'd be <laughs> easy street from there. Okay. <laughs> just kind of forget about. So I'm about a little under 250 now. So if I do a, a five day uh, water fast, would I expect to lose a pound or five pounds or 10 pounds? Or what, what has your experience been when you were at your heavier uh, weight? You'll probably lose 10 pounds. Okay. And the then three days is where I use, lose most of my weight. The two or three days. Yeah. Okay. And then if you go back to the same diet, the same exercise, same sleep schedule as beforehand, then that would just gradually comes back on in time. Right. Yeah. You have to be disciplined. And what the good thing about water fasting is it changes your palate. So your taste buds reset and okay. you can really enjoy natural, healthy food again. You know, where you're going, you're not going for the chocolate. You're not going for, you know, the processed, you know, cheese its and stuff like that. Okay. No, you're, you're totally satisfied with just regular, you know, unsweetened or unsalted foods. Um, so it really helps you stay on that, that healthy diet. Okay. Interesting. So uh, then going, uh, so veganism isn't what brought your weight down, which is exactly what I, I have experienced. I've tried vegan for a week here and there, and I always gain a few pounds. Um, and it's probably because I'm not eating healthy. I'm eating pasta and rice and, and potatoes and such. Um, right. But I watched a video you sent to me a year or two ago uh, from a, a guy basically saying that's what you should be doing is rice and, and uh, potatoes and the stuff that poor people for thousands of years have eaten. Yep. Uh, that's what you want to do is, is that what you consider a healthy diet or is it more of a, uh, uh yeah. What is it? Whole plant-based foods. So, uh, potatoes are great. There's nothing wrong with it. people get confused on uh, carbohydrates and they, they don't distinguish between natural healthy car carbs and processed carbs. So it's almost the same as saying, well, sugar is bad. Well, uh, natural sugars are good. Processed sugars are bad. So when you look at it that way, and if you just simplify everything and just go, well, you know what, whole foods, that's the way to go, you know, go by nature. Nature's pretty smart. They kind of got it figured out. So if you just go with nature and just eat a colorful plant-based diet, you're going to be totally fine. You don't need to count your my macronutrients, your micronutrients, any of that. You don't have to, I mean, I did that and it helps. So I would recommend anybody starting out, you know, if they were interested into a plant-based diet is to download the app, the chron chronometer or whatever. I don't know how to pronounce it, but what it does is it, ju it shows you all the nutrients that you're getting from all your foods. And it helps you track that and track your calories and track every um, your protein, yeah, your protein, excuse me, because People, oh, well, they associate meat with protein. And that's not, I mean, that to me, I mean, you can do that, obviously. But where do you think the meat gets the protein? <laughs> okay. They get it from plants. So you can just bypass the middleman and just go right to plants and, and get all the protein you need. I mean, I'm obviously not protein deficient. Some might go, oh, look at his cheeks are sunken in and 
because he doesn't look like a typical fat American or who knows what. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, people are going to point fingers and make comments all they want, but, but uh, no, I can assure you I'm perfectly healthy, perfectly healthy. Hey, you, you beat me up the big hill we climbed in uh, Arizona. So, so yeah, you <laughs> but, definitely be better than me anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep, I can ride the dirt, dirt bike just as fast as uh, most of the other guys. So uh, <laughs> yep, I think just fine. And I'm so, 50 years old. So. Okay. So beyond the, the, the health aspect, and this is what we as uh, voluntarists, anarcho-capitalists, this is what we're kind of interested in is the philosophy, morality, ethics of stuff. Yeah. Um, so setting aside health benefits or not of a plant-based diet, as the United Nations would call it, or as a vegan diet, whatever, right. setting aside the health benefits or detriments, what do you think about the morality of it, the ethics of it? Well, I don't think you could argue against it. Um, the morality on it is pretty sound. I think the morality for veganism is exactly the same in line with any logical argument such as uh, anarchism. Uh, you can't argue against anarchism. If you're a statist, you, you just don't have a good argument against uh, no rulers, no masters, and no slaves. There's, there's no argument that you could possibly come up with that's based on morality. And I think the same is true with veganism. There is no such thing as a good argument um, against causing unnecessary harm to another sentient being. Um, and how do you define sentient? Someone that, a uh, being that feels emotion, can feel pain, that has bonds, that, you know, they have family bonds. Just like, I mean, a, a mother cow with her calf, they have a bond. Um, I think it's obvious. You know, we love our dogs and we love our cats. We don't realize that uh, pigs are smarter than dogs. They have the same exact. Now, obviously, in captive, when you have these factory farms and you have these pigs that are, you know, stuck into a tiny little cage for the, their entire lives. No, you're not going to see that emotional bond. But ask anyone who's ever had a pig for a pet. And there are several people. Um, Sue had a pig for a pet. She loved it. And it was extremely affectionate and, and uh, wonderful pet. So we're so disconnected from, uh, I guess, some of our food that we just take it for granted. And we're like, oh, well, yeah, we can just take and, and use this animal for whatever we want. Because, well, we're the, the higher being. We're the one that's in charge. Well, if you took that logic, imagine if some other uh, civilization from outer space or whatever came to the, the earth and said, well, you know, these humans, well, look at just how barbaric they are. And they're not to our level because we're already a peaceful, you know, anarchic to society. And we don't believe in rulers and masters and all that. So we could use these, you know, these primitive types because they're not to our level. So yeah, we could, lock them in cages and farm them and use them for entertainment and, and taste pleasures and whatever, and, and so on and so forth. When, when you look at it that way and you put yourself in the, uh, the victim's point of view, well, things really change drastically. I mean, you can't, you can no longer ignore the logical conflicts in my opinion. I mean, I couldn't, um, the person who got me, started because i was i was a vegetarian first and uh then listening to mark stevens i think i mean that guy i don't agree with everything he says he's got you know a chip on his shoulder against anarcho cap or uh uh whatever the the certain part of anarchy like i don't care about what kind of anarchist you are but um so uh yeah an anarcho capitalist so he's got a big old chip on his shoulder about all anarcho capitalists and this and that, which I don't think, I mean, he's got a, he's got a point on some of them, but he takes the, the worst arguments from the worst people and then puts that in as the whole group, which a lot of people, a lot of people do that. I mean, I think that's called a uh, straw man, right? So, straw man. And you just, Oh, that's, we can, we can attack this point much easier. Right. And a lot of people do that with veganism too. You know, like Larkin Rose has done that with veganism on one of his videos where he says, well, vegans, they claim they don't do any harm at all, you know, and they're, they're all hypocrites. Well, yeah, if that was their point, they would be hypocrites. I don't know a single vegan. I've never met a vegan that says, oh, well, 
we don't do any harm to any animals or anything, you know, we're, but the point is you try to do the least amount of harm you possibly can. So for instance, if you lived up in the North where you survived on fishing and you obviously can't plant a garden very efficiently, or there's no trade where, you know, you can get trade resources and labor and things for, for healthy whole food, you know, of course, <clears throat> excuse me, of course, you're going to live you're going to live on the animals. That's your only choice, right? But they're going to do it in probably the most, you know, natural way. Obviously, if you're living in up north in Alaska, you're not having a factory farm, right? You're not putting chickens in, you know, where they can barely move and they're all, you have to cut their beaks so they're not pecking at each other. The pigs, you have to cut their tails and you have to cut their teeth. Uh, the cows, you have to dehorn them and things. I mean, come on. Like, as humans, do we need to stoop that low? I mean, just for a uh, pleasure, like the pleasure of your food, the taste of your food, just for that. That's, I mean, to me, when you really think about it, that's borderline satanic evil. Um, I can't think of any other, I can't think of it being any other way. I mean, if, if you wanted to have a farm and, you know, it was just you and your family and everything was, but, but when you go to the factory farm and then people will say, well, yeah, but I don't support that. But do you go to McDonald's? You know, do you, oh, well, I'm going to work. It's, uh, it's no big deal. I'm going to get a breakfast McMuffin. Uh, well, I'm going to go to the restaurant. Let's go to the Olive Garden. Let's get this. What do you think you're supporting? Where do you think that comes from? You're in your grocery store. Where do you think that pretty packaged meat that doesn't resemble your the animal that was slaughtered? Where do you think that came from? You know, if you've watched any of the ve the vegan videos, and you don't have to be a vegan uh, supporter or anything like that, but just wouldn't you want to know where your food comes from? Uh, just check out some of those videos. Look at the the gas chambers when they lower pigs down into it gas chamber and, and how they suffer and then go oh yeah but i really like the taste of bacon okay you know i like a lot of things that uh i don't force other people or or use cause victims to give me that pleasure you know right so now oh go ahead no just go ahead yeah so I, I, I want to kind of bring the NAP into this a bit. And by the way, your uh, video camera has gone out, but I'll chat if you uh, oh, okay. want to work on that. that. So uh, thinking about the NAP, the non-aggression principle, I have actually over the last year or so kind of come to the conclusion that there isn't a non-aggression principle. There are non-aggression principles. And we each as human beings or as uh, thinking sentient people who are capable of recognizing rights in others, et cetera, uh, we come up with our own non-aggression principles. So if somebody else says, it's part of my non-aggression principle not to kill celery, then I would say, well, I don't agree with that, but it's your principle. So you get to have it be whatever you want. So I, I do think there's a difference between the two, uh, between animals and humans, but then I, I absolutely get it also. And I, I, as you said to me some years ago, and it's been sticking with me, um, okay, I'm hungry. My body needs some food. I can either reach onto plate A and eat some food that didn't cause harm to anything that would scream out ouch in its own language, or I can reach onto the other plate and the thing behind that was causing the thing to go ouch. Um, and I, I, this is something that I, I I have not changed in my life. I think I went a month once being right. vegetarian, veganish, um, but I'm... I'm a foodie. I love good food. And I absolutely deny that I have ever been able to enjoy good, healthy foods. Um, I would have to give up that part of my life, but you know, maybe, maybe I enjoy other things. Maybe I enjoy stabbing children in the eye and I get right. a lot of pleasure out of that, but I go, eh, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore because it hurts kids. Um, but maybe that's the, the decision one has to make. Yeah. And I can tell you, like when I was eating meat and, um, you know, like fast food, I, I ate the worst 
diet, like the worst, the typical standard American diet on steroids. You know, like my favorite was Arby's roast beef sandwiches. Man, I just loved Arby's roast beef sandwiches. But the thing that, um, like, I don't miss meat at all. Like, not even a, like you could you could throw a steak in front of me, or even an Arby's roast beef sandwich. And I'm, <laughs> yeah, no thanks. Um, because the thing is, your norm changes after a while. So that's one thing that people don't realize is that yes, what you're eating now is just like, oh my god, this is so good. And I just can't think of ta- you know replacing it with something else. I just can't imagine it. But when you look at these, they have these videos of uh, people from other countries trying different countries' foods. And, you know, you'll see Americans trying actual real Chinese food. And, and they're just like, oh, you know, this is uh, like, oh, no, I can't eat that. I can't. But the Chinese, they're like, this is, I can't imagine not eating this because it's part of, that's what they were raised on. That's what, all you have to do is go three or four months and now you have a new norm. Not the face mask new norm, but you have a new, face, but <laughs> new norm where you're actually enjoying the food. And, and there are so many different varieties. Actually, my diet is probably more, more you know, diverse now that I'm vegan than it was when I was eating meat. Um, so I really enjoy it. And I'm, I'm just scratching the surface. You know, I'm not by any means a vegan expert or anything on cooking. I'm, I'm a very lazy chef. So, but, you know, from what I eat, it's just, uh, yeah, there's, there's so many different options and so many different things, but people just don't, they just don't look at it as an option. They're like, oh no, I, I can't go there. I'm not gonna, you know, I don't want to turn into a soy boy and all that and be some skinny little, you know, unhealthy vegan. And granted, you can be a skinny little unhealthy vegan just as easily as you can be a skinny little unhealthy meat eater. I mean, you are what, you know, if you don't exercise and you just eat junk food or you eat a low caloric diet, yeah, you're going to be skinny and weak. It doesn't matter what form uh, you're taking, if it's meat or vegetables or, you know, beans, doesn't matter. So, okay. But for the morality part, yeah, it's just, I just don't, there's never been a good argument against uh, veganism is on a morality basis. I mean, you could say, well, no, that's just not, it's not, you know, it's not convenient enough. I mean, I guess that's the best argument and that's, that's true. I mean, it's not convenient. Um, if you go to a restaurant, you have maybe one or two choices in most places that you could, and it's usually like a salad with nothing on it. I mean, that's what Americans think of veganism. Oh, you're, because they go to the restaurant. Well, there's what could you eat? We could there's nothing to eat. Well, yeah, because you went to the wrong freaking restaurant. <laughs> like go to a vegan restaurant, you know, and then you're gonna be like, whoa, I don't even know what any of this stuff is. You know, throw a dart on the freaking menu and just eat it. You know, you're probably gonna love it because one thing about restaurants is it's just salt, oil, and sugar. It doesn't most restaurants, that's what they feed you. It's Salt, oil, and sugar. What kind of salt, oil, and sugar do you want? That's what you're going to get. And vegan restaurants aren't aren't really much different. So if you go to, I mean, if you're eating whole food, plant-based diet, restaurants aren't the place to go. Right. I mean, you just don't go to restaurants anymore. And I mean, yeah, you can go to a vegan restaurant, but it's no different than somebody going to Burger King or something like that. It's going to taste great, but it's probably not going to be that healthy. Right now. So for the, for the morality of it or for the, and I'm not as technical, I've been following and I'm just loving uh, disenthralls shows uh, and it, just a group of deep philosophical nerdy types that get to the kind of the, the bottom of things. And mm-hmm. I, I have a few areas of disagreement. Um, and one area though, that I'm kind of coming around to be persuaded is that most morality is indeed subjective. Good and bad is a subjective thing. However, with that 100%. <laughs> you agree or disagree? Disagree. Disagree. Okay. And so there, uh, the, the disenthrall team's argument is that there is a fine line 
uh, that is absolutely either on this side of it or that side. So it is uh, objective. However, once you cross that line between initiating violence against others, once you cross over that, and their definition and my definition of others is other human beings, not animals, uh, not non-human animals. So once you cross that line, they would say, I think, I'm putting words in their mouth, maybe I shouldn't, but I think their argument would be, it is not immoral to kill and eat a cow. However, it's more in the aesthetics range of, now it's probably better to kill one cow than five cows, or it's, it's, it's not horrible to flip somebody off, but it's better to flip one person off than 10 people, that kind of thing. So it's more of a distasteful thing. So I, I kind of bring that up as the, the intro to you and I are walking down the street and we see somebody punching a two-year-old in the face repeatedly. I think the two of us, big guys, we're going to jump in and say, knock that off. And we're going to pull the, the attacker off. What is your viewpoint when you see somebody eating at Arby's or you and I, I say, hey, let's go out. I, I forget our discussion. I say, hey, let's go out for breakfast. And I order the big plate full of meat. What's your, th what's your line there? What's your thought about that? What do you do to stop it? Or do you? No, I don't do anything to stop it. Um, it's no different than if I, you know, somebody votes or somebody posts political stuff on Facebook or, oh, I support Trump or I support Biden. It's like, oh, really? That again? I, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just feel like, you know, it's like, okay, whatever. Uh, they just don't, I guess maybe I have a superiority, you know, thing where I'm thinking, okay, they just don't know. But I think everybody does. Uh, mm -hmm. any, any, any feeling or any, uh, position that you hold strongly, if somebody doesn't have that position and you think you've got it well thought out and you've got all the, you know, you've really done your homework, you're going to look at that person with a different opinion as wrong. And you're just going to be like, oh, they just don't understand. They're so, oh, it's like in a couple of years, maybe they'll get it. And yeah, whether I'm right or wrong, I don't know. I don't, who knows whether they're right. But that's what uh, you have to invest it. You have to hold stock in what you believe in. And the thing is, if you believe in one thing, but you do another, you know, where most people will be like, well, I'm an animal lover. I love animals. And I just, oh, but you don't mind torturing animals. Like, or, or do you just love some animals? You know, you could say, like some people that are animal lovers really should say, I'm a pet lover. You know, I really love cute, cuddly pets. You know, I don't like cows because they're dirty and they're in a field and they don't, you know, they don't sit on my lap. Right. Or they don't purr when I pet them, you know, which right. I don't know, if you pet a cow, maybe it would purr. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that is a perfect segue into a, a, a crazy scenario because I, I've got to say, I love meat. I think that it is healthy to eat meat. I think it is physically a just fine thing. Not as much as I eat. Like I I'm fat and have high cholesterol and like, you're right. saying, I'm not healthy. I completely admit that. Um, so I, that's definitely a cognitive dissonance thing or no, actually it's just a choice. I enjoy a good steak, um, more than I enjoy an extra year of life or not having a heart attack or whatever. That's clearly the choice I'm making each day. But aside from that, here is a, a, a moral argument that I don't think holds water, but I'm kind of getting a kick out of formulating it in my head. Okay. So I would love to hear you either agree with it or disagree with it. So I'm going to go tell a little story here. So, and, and this is actually a true thing. We have some family friends and uh, they're also business associates that we owe favors to. Right. And the, at the end of May, they have a big branding day. I live in the Rocky Mountain region. And so I and, and a group of my friends, we all go get together and they're usually about a hundred of us. And from seven in the morning till 11 in the morning, we brand almost a thousand calves. And this is my job is as a wrestler. So the cowboy goes out and ropes the calf and pulls it over, drags it over. And mother is screaming in terror, not mine, but the calves. And mm -hmm. the calf is screaming in terror. And yep. I grab the calves hind legs and somebody else grabs the front and we wrestle it to the ground. We both hold it down. The vet comes over and gives it its uh, forced vaccinations. Yep. Uh, another person comes over and feels for the horns, dehorns it, which is essentially just a sharp knife cutting into the the horn cutting it off no anesthesia is that what it's called the painkiller yeah and then somebody else comes over with a hot 
branding iron and sears the calf uh it's the side with it. the cake to the torture yeah and i'm holding this poor little thing down the whole time and then the calf gets up and and runs back to mom dazed and confused and then goes on about its business five minutes later it's frolicking with other calves but so that's that's kind of the process um so I learned a little bit about the cattle industry just from helping these friends. And I learned that they're born Aprilish. They get the branding the end of May. Then about 18 months later, in the meantime, they live in the, the beautiful rolling hills of the Rocky Mountains, eating grass, playing with their friends, uh, nursing mama for a while, and just hanging out, having an awesome life. 18 months later, they're put onto trucks cramped, uncomfortable positions for a few days. They're shipped to the Midwest. They're fel- fed the, the best possible. They just eat up. They get to be gluttons for four months and, and just enjoy. And maybe maybe I, I kind of am biased there, but I love yeah, you're overeating. A biased, but yeah, a little bit. So if they're you're overeaters really like me, they're loving this. Um, so they're eating all of this crap food, I'm sure, but it's to just to fatten them up. And then four months later, they're killed. It's probably a miserable day or hour or minute or whatever the killing process. So that is kind of how it all goes. And then I thought of this scenario or this argument about these, these little calves. So one little calf's name is Bill. And this, in about a month and a half, I'm going to be branding or helping brand Bill. Bill is going to have a miserable minute or two of terror, and then he's going to get to have this wonderful short life. Cows usually, you know, in the natural state would live to be about 20 years old. So he's going to live a tenth of that. He'll live to be two years old. And most of it, 99.999% of it will be sheer bliss. Well, people like you come along and don't send market signals. You don't order steak. You don't have the common courtesy. And so the, the market signal goes to ranchers and they no longer grow cattle. And so, yeah, what about this poor little calf that's never going to come into being and enjoy 18 months frolicking in green pastures with its friends? You, Steve, you and people like you are causing that. Yes, it's horrible. Okay, so wh- how does my argument go? Where does it, using our good, intelligent logic, where does it break down if it does? Well, first of all, you have to think about, uh, is, is the product necessary, right? Because it, you did cause harm. And granted, like, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you keep all the, the wonderful, like, oh, these, these cattle are living in bliss and it's wonderful and everything is just, just it couldn't be any better. It's paradise. It's pure cow paradise. <laughs> and, uh, but the thing is, like you mentioned, and that's a good point, you're taking most of their life away from them. So imagine if you, like the, the aliens come to the earth and they start harvesting humans. Now they give everybody the, the, coolest video game system in the world, you know, or, well, they probably wouldn't be able to use that because they would only be around what 15 16 years old when they were slaughtered so i don't know the coolest uh, lincoln log toys and whatever and, and they were super comfortable would that be moral like if 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 you raised humans and you 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 let them be as comfortable as possible yeah of course you know when they're when they're young when they're say five years old or whatever you're gonna or two years old you're gonna brand them you're gonna burn them you're gonna torture them a little bit but after you know after a day they're going to be fine they're all cool they, they don't even care anymore and they're back to playing with their awesome toys and eating the best food ever and then when they're 16 you put them in a slaughterhouse where they can smell and hear all the screams and death and torture and terror and they know because well they have a brain and they can figure things out they can sense and they can feel what's going to happen and they struggle and, and do the most they can to try to get out of that area, but they're kicked and they're prodded and they're shocked and they're forced to go into a hole that, you know, shocks them with a bolt of, of electricity or a bolt in the head that shocks them. And then somebody slits their throat, puts a chain on their ankle, hoists them up in the air and, and then continues to slaughter. No, I mean, is it worth is it worth that for something that isn't even necessary? It's just a taste preference. Would you do that for sugar? I mean, you really love sugar. Would you, would you, would you kill things for sugar? 
Like, I, I don't know. I, it's each individual has to ha make that choice, but I think they should make it an informed choice. I don't think this should be hidden. Most people never see it. Um, if you, if you showed the footage of a slaughterhouse in a grocery store, you'd be kicked out of there. It, I mean, it would be like, Oh, you're terrorizing the people. You can't be showing that you can't. That's a horrible. Well, this is what people are paying for. Why shouldn't they see it? You know, at least, at, I mean, maybe you don't have to see it every day, but at least before you buy the product, you should know exactly what's happening. And, you know, I don't care how, if the, if the cattle was grass fed, if it's, you know, up in uh, Wisconsin and the greenest of green and, and which isn't true in any situation. There's no such thing as a cattle that's just plainly grass fed. You know, you harvest the hay or you, you know, this or that. And then, but most of these factory, that's another thing too. Like these factory uh, animals, like you said, they're eating, what are they eating? Grain? Where does the grain come from? You know, mostly they're come from wheat in the fields. And it's, so it's, if you look around any of these states and you see all this farmland, that's not farmland for vegetables. All that land that's used to feed the animal that you kill to then eat. So when people sit there and say, oh, well, vegans are killing all these mice and uh, with all this farm equipment, harvesting all the vegetables and all the, it's like, really? Like, does it think about it? You know, I wish people could just sit back and think for an extra five minutes, you know, before they actually started spewing out arguments, which, I mean, to me, I think any argument is good as long as you do it rationally and you think about it logically, you know, when people get all emotional and, uh, then it then it tries it shortens the argument right because you can no longer have a civil discussion right but but some of these arguments if you just looked at the other side or looked at a video they're all addressed um they're all pretty shallow and they don't have a whole lot to stand on so i'm going to go back to my original i've never heard of a good argument against veganism and if if i did i wouldn't be vegan um i love the taste of meat you know I, it, but I love the taste of a lot of things, right? You know, I, I, there's a lot of things that I love that I don't partake in. You know, I wouldn't go, oh, you know, I, I really love this Ferrari, so I'm just going to take it. You know, I'll kill somebody so I can drive a Ferrari because boy, do I love it! Boy, do I get a pleasure from driving this awesome car. No, I'm not going to hurt anybody. I wouldn't. I wouldn't kill a a rabbit to drive a a Ferrari. You know, um, and the thing is, I was. I would say more of an evil person where I did kill things and I've, I've shot pigeons just for fun, you know, just for, you know, because, well, I didn't, I didn't even think about it. It's like, well, look how good of a shot I am. I could shoot that pigeon from a hundred yards. Well, look how awesome I am. It's like, didn't even think twice about, Oh, is that, is that a life that I just took? Is that, was that necessary? Was it? No, it was just for stupid entertainment. It was stupid. Uh, and, you know, I look back on it and I, no, I don't, I'm not proud of myself, but we all do things that we're not proud of. And it's like, well, if you just continue to do it and you don't think about it, that's something different. But if you think about it and just like I used to vote, I used to support Republican candidates and, and do this and do that and, and try to convince other people, oh, you need to, this is the best chance we have of freedom. This is the most important election of our lifetimes. <laughs> you know, right. just the, the stupid, shallow parroting, parroting whatever media has thrown into my freaking head. And eating meat is no different. Uh, you know, people will think, oh, well, yeah, if you don't eat meat, you're going to be weak. You have to eat meat to have muscle and be strong and manly. And, and you're, you're such a, a wuss or a, and, you know, a, a beta male if if you know you're eating plants you know and that's it's like come on really really i mean yeah anybody that knows me it's like come on no but uh i mean if you want to think that you can but i think you're on the losing end so i would just suggest that you know just take a little more time and see some of the arguments and go do these really hold water just like you would for anarchy, you know, just like you would 
when you're looking at uh, an anarchist position, is there a good reason to vote? You know, is there a good reason to have a master? Right? Is there a good reason to have a slave? Um, right. I so, can't. so that kind of comes into, and by the way, your camera just uh, went out again. Uh, this kind of goes into a, a a thing I've been thinking about. I call it shepherd's pole of good and bad. And I, I have a measuring tape that's six feet tall. And I, I think about things as if, if it's the very bottom, if it's raping and killing, that's a one, uh, you know, it's an inch or an eighth of an inch. And then it goes all the way up to six feet is doing great, great good. And since I'm not convinced that morality is in fact objective rather than subjective, I used to think that, but I, I just could no longer argue for it. So now I think about those, I think about veganism in that way. And if you are shooting to have everything in your life be in that top foot of the pole, you want to have everything in your life be five feet or above. That's that's your goal. Well, maybe eating a chicken is a four foot eight inch thing and eating a cow is a four foot even thing. Who knows? Yeah, um, yeah. There's definitely, you know, variables, you know, for yeah, instance, if you I ate think it, why not try to be higher on that pole though? Like, I think that's a big part of what you're saying is right. oh, today you get to have A or B, which do you choose mm -hmm. to do right now? And yeah. I'm not going to so, come uh, kill you either way, but yes, you're probably a little cooler dude if you do it this way. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the, I mean, the, the best you can possibly do, like, say you're, you're like, you know what? I, I, I admit it, you know, I'm brainwashed and it's hard for me to do this. This is a challenge, right? I, all these restaurants, everything around me, my social life is revolving around eating meat. You know, I love barbecues. I love having the family over. I can, you know, but so, the, so then do little things, you know, just do little things. Like instead of like overindulging in ribs, chicken, steak, uh, all this, just go, you know what, I'm just going to have a little bit or let's cut down on this or let's, hey, just, you know, number one, it's, it's way healthier, you know, to have as li little amount of meat as possible. Um, so, you know, let's just cut down on it the best we can. How hard is that? Um, look into more alternatives, like look into soy milks. Like the thing is, I used to think soy milk was gross and disgusting uh, when I drank regular milk. And I just like thinking, looking back on it, I'm like, where in, where did I get that concept where plants, you take a plant and you squeeze it, that's disgusting. But you take a cow with feces all over its udders and things like that. Oh, and then you, oh, that's just wonderful. Yeah, the pus. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's great nothing better than that like my god Ugh. it's just it, it to me it's just when you actually think about it and it's like why wouldn't i take soy milk it tastes way better you know it tastes better it's plants you could drink oat milk you could drink you know because people are going to get off on oh the soy is destroying the rainforest and you know, that's why we don't come on different soy uh the soy that's destroying the rainforest is feeding your cattle by the way, it's feeding your cattle. It's and your another side point I would say is that rainforests are often sagebrushy hillsides that they have designated rainforests. They're cutting some big trees too, but there's so much of the UN sustainability BS lies about either that way, stuff. Way, I, I don't think it's, is it, is it good to be cutting down anything to be growing food for cattle? When, when you look I don't at think the, there's a problem with that. Yeah, but when you look at how much you're spending and how much is going into for, for the calories, you know, because people will be like, oh, plant, plants aren't sustainable. You can't do that. You couldn't grow to feed everybody with. It's like, really? How much yeah. do cattle eat? How much do cattle eat versus humans? I mean, look at all the land that is being used just to feed the cattle. And it's a portion of your diet. It's not your whole diet. Everybody eats plants. You're already eating plants you eat plants, you eat, um, and then you add meat on top of that, which is what 90% or it's, it's up there. I don't know the exact percentage, but I mean, it's definitely over 70% of the agriculture goes to feeding just your meat source, which I don't have a problem with. Like I I'm, I'm leaning toward agreeing with you because I, I can't find good arguments right. that it is cooler or it's better for a human being to not 
kill critters in order to to get a meal like i can agree with that from a moral standpoint but i see if it wasn't for that if somebody like pets like if you wanted to have a cow as a pet and you wanted to buy a million acres and it's your property and you wanted to cut the trees down and and put algae on it or whatever cows like that's your property and that's your choice so i don't see a like i'm not a in the least bit of a sustainability kind of person in the terminology that the or the way that the united nations thinks about it i I completely am in business terms etc um but i I don't really care about that part so yeah if you had your if you have your own farm uh and you have you raise your own cattle and your own chickens and your own i don't have an issue with that it's all on you i mean it's what you're doing you're the one that's you know taking stock in it and you're the one that's investing and and i mean do i think would i do it i wouldn't do that but my bigger problem is when people do it naively when they go to the grocery store and they just pick up the meat and the the bacon and the, and don't even and then just go well this is just food this is just you know it's like well maybe you should check out a video you know and just see exactly or even just tour like call up the the local slaughterhouse and say hey could do you mind if i take a tour i'd like to see exactly how my food is prepared or where it comes from and and what happens and how the process works. Um, I don't know if they do that, but, but I mean, that's what people should do, you know, just like, uh, you know, I've seen the the factory strawberry farms in Mexico. Um, It didn't seem too off putting to me. I mean, I could drive by and see them as, you know, didn't, I didn't see anything horrible, but I mean, maybe there's, there's horrible things going on that I don't know about, but, uh, we have to eat. So I think uh, if you're eating vegetables and and fruits and things, that's by far the lesser of two evils, you know, if it is evil at all, which I don't, I don't believe it is. Right. People will argue that plants are living and they have feelings and this and that. And uh, I just use the example. Well, if your two-year-old was hungry, would you feel bad if they uh, cut up a carrot versus cutting up a bunny rabbit or cutting up a pig? Or would you feel uncomfortable if your two-year-old was stabbing an animal? I, I'm, I'm, I mean, that right there should let you know. I mean, if if your two-year-old kids, you know, cut up an animal and eat it, and and you feel fine with that, other than the <clears throat> other than the safety of you know your two-year-old handling a knife, obviously. But uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, you just there's so many blinders that we hold that we just don't see, you know, that. Uh, you know, people get offended when they see slaughterhouses and they see cattle suffering and bleeding out and all that. And I go, well, actually, because of your huge canines, you know, and because we're so meant, we're designed to eat meat, you should feel hungry. You should feel, you know, like, whoa, wow, I really want a piece of that. You know, you should get excited, you know, just like if you see a good meal, somebody cutting up a nice salad and everything or a fruit, you, you peel an orange and you're like, oh, wow, I want, you don't go, oh my God, that's horrific you know, put that orange peeling back on, Oh, take it away, take it away. Right. No, it's because it's natural. You know, plants are natural. That's what we're designed to eat. There's really uh, good. That. But, but however, the hat you're wearing isn't natural yet. It shades your head. Like I, I, I think that's a, I, I, in, right. in some cases it can work, but not yeah, everything but, that's natural is good. Right. But I'm not saying it's, it's good because it's natural. I'm saying it's natural. When you're when you're going against the nature, like you're, you can tell by the way you feel, right? When you see an animal suffering, and and you feel empathy, right? Or you feel, or you, right? You you don't get hungry when you see an a- animal torturing, or you don't want to bite an animal. You don't have right. like your claws. Where's your? How are we designed to actually? You know, you could say, well, our brain overrides all that you know we have a brain that can make tools and maybe that's so i don't know that could be a good argument i'm willing to hear any arguments yeah and i probably make the best arguments against myself than anybody else (laughs) um but that's something i love about our whole group of people who have come to the conclusion that we don't need masters is that it's not a comfortable position to hold and 
in order to get there, most of us are able to have, and I mean, today's format wasn't a debate. It was just kind of learning what your perspectives are, but whether it is, even if it was a debate thing, and even if we didn't know and like each other, we could yell at each other. And at the end be like, Oh man, that was really fun. I learned something. Hey, I did too. And oh, you, you know, you were a big time fallacy here. Oh yeah, you got a, you had a fallacy there. Oh yeah, you're right. We did. Like, it's really neat that we can just have fun debates, arguments, investigative sessions uh, about this kind of, this kind of thing. So as we close out here, we've actually gone a little bit over an hour, but as we close out here, what, uh, what haven't we talked about that we should get out there that you would like to, to put out there to the, to the world? I would probably, you know, just put out like my religious philosophy. You know, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a religious person per se, but I think going back to the argument and how we don't, don't get angry and, oh, you're, I think the purpose of life is to grow and evolve. And uh, I think that there's probably multiple dimensions. And just like anything in the world, you don't really die. Everything goes in cycles. You know, you, you're born, you die, you're born, you, and, and things keep shifting. Nothing's ever stagnant. Nothing's ever, it doesn't just stand still and, and that's it. So I personally believe that we evolve. And you can also devolve, right? Depending on your ability to grow and challenge yourself. And so that's one of my main philosophies and how I believe and how I come to my conclusions and why I'm comfortable with it and why I'm comfortable with, okay, yeah, I've made mistakes in the past, but do I keep making those mistakes or do I learn from them and grow and evolve and move forward and hopefully you know, move on to the next level, right? That's what I'm, I'm hoping for. I could be wrong, um, you know, but to me, that makes sense. Yeah. That's Wonderful. why I'm so powerful on anarchy and veganism. And, you know, I guess I'm not an activist or anything, but for my personal life. Right, right. Well, and speaking of activism, personal life, business, uh, if there's anything you would like to tell folks about to look you up, uh, learn more about you, hire you, uh, anything like that, please feel free to share it with us. Well, if you're in Arizona, Southern Arizona, I do work on motorcycles if your dirt bike's broke or something like that. So I don't Perfect. know how that's going to reach. Yeah. So, <laughs> kind of a segment of a segment of a segment here, right? Right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Steve, if I come up with some good arguments, can I chat with you again? Or is that open to other people as well? Anybody that has a, a good argument, I just would would ask that they go through their own mind, you know, and take both sides and really come up with good arguments the best you can for and against any position. This is throughout life on, on any subject, not just anarchy or veganism or, you know, who knows what it is, New World Order. Just go through the arguments yourself in your own mind and try to come up with the best arguments, maybe even write them down and really challenge yourself and see if you, you know, am am I really coming to the best conclusion? And, you know, that's what I do personally. So. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on, Steve. Look forward to having you on again sometime. We'd love talking to you. I'm about to